Hello and welcome to the hard cell where the stick in the swill bucket rattles back. Yes, it's Christmas again. Another year dies screaming. And I'm nothing if not predictable, so the usual December lineup begins here with a Christmassy happiness in magazines. <laughs> Last year we looked at a festive double issue of Radio Times, and so in deference to what I just said about predictability, this year we'll do the TV Times. For new and or foreign viewers, the difference is that the Radio Times was made by the BBC and carried their listings, TV and radio, while TV Times was made by the ITV companies and carried theirs, as well as Channel 4 when it arrived, which it hasn't in the issue we're looking at, because this is Christmas 1969. The one with the green wrapping paper cover with the leering Des O'Connor dressed as an Amish Santa. Just imagine that staring up at you from the coffee table for at least two weeks. Incidentally, this is the edition published in the Anglia region, for what it's worth. And I'm not sure that's very much. It hasn't stopped them from including a holiday advert for Great Yarmouth, for one thing. But we get ahead of ourselves. Last year we looked at the Christmas and New Year Radio Times from 1973 and found it full of alcohol. Perhaps unsurprisingly, four years earlier, the same largely applies. The first advert, a modest nine pages in, is for scotch. Seems like everyone drank scotch 50 to 60 years ago. Everyone drinks scotch now, of course, but it feels more prevalent, more ordinary, back in the day for some reason. Perhaps because the standard lager explosion hadn't happened yet. This is Long John Scotch bragging like a man with twelve penises about being the best blend in the entire known universe, and everyone with a functioning nose knows it, so drink it, you bastard. Only put slightly more sophisticatedly than that. Or you might prefer a cognac, in which case be aware that the French, who, let's face it, are superior to the English in every way, insist on Martel. According to Martel, anyway. That's not the main brag here, though. Instead, they're harping on the fact that their cognac comes in about 86 different sizes and price tags. And invites you to use some kind of mathematical formula to figure out how much of which sizes to get for your entire family. Then you take away the cognac you first thought of and add three. The final conclusion is that the largest bottle is technically the best buy at 123 shillings and sixpence. Because if you really need a full quart of cognac, that's the financial area you're operating in. We're talking high-class alcoholism. Under the volcano alcoholism. There's a reason tramps drink Thunderbird. What's the price? Forty twice. Quite. A few pages later, we get our first double-page spread. Gift ideas from GEC. That's the General Electric Company. Not to be confused with the American one. Formed way back at the dawn of electricity and having a major role in the building of the national grid, they were now one of Britain's leading names in electric appliances. And how 60s can you get with this packaging? Pastel pinks, baroque lettering, chintzy frilly borders around the pictures, form over function at every turn. At first glance, I genuinely thought this was some gift box of chocolates or Turkish delight or something. And then of course I spotted the right hand page, which depicts all of those products out of the box, because the boxes are too over designed to be of much use in advertising. The products themselves you'll notice sit far more on the function end of the design spectrum. Except the electric blanket, I suppose. Of course the other staple of this time of year is holiday adverts. You've already had a Holidays at Home and Abroad page for the tiny ads. Swinging Holidays! In Cornwall! Uh, the first full-colour full-pager dares you to come to Canada. Where they're just too laid back to end sentences with full stops. The copy's tone is largely just wide-eyed astonishment that you're even in Canada. I mean, what even is Canada? You can hardly believe it's real. This country is wild and beautiful, and you've seen nothing like it, ever. It's got water and trees like the real world, but 
It's in Canada. I'm freaking out just thinking about it. Also, you'll never guess how cheaply Air Canada can fly you out there. You're going to have to. Because we won't tell you. Probably not that cheap then. Our next advert, two pages later, is for a potential gift for the kiddies. The Viewmaster. Every child of a certain age range probably had one of these, or a rip-off thereof, including me. Bugger if I can remember what the pictures were, though. The selection here is, uh, varied. Battlerized episodes of Flipper, or Joe 90, Joey Anderson's least popular Super Mario Nation character. Or chapters from the Jungle Book. Or else images of the recently completed moon landing. Or for the really unlucky kid, some mountains. Actually all pretty cool, potentially cool, except for the mountains. A kid opening up a Viewmaster on Christmas Day, only to find the only picture set to be images of the Scottish Highlands, could experience a level of emotional whiplash from excitement to disappointment and horror, which will haunt it into adulthood. It seems like the 1969 equivalent of getting a Super Nintendo and no games to play on it except Bebe's kids. No vibes, no Beavis. But now we're into the listings themselves, and there's another holiday advert. Highly straightforward, literally presented as a questionnaire to get you properly sorted by income and preference on what these red barrel tolerance. You can go as far afield as Turkey for just 70 quid. You'll probably end up in Majorca or all the cost of Brava though, because as even the advert admits, it's cheap. Next, more booze. When we met last year, or if you prefer, four years into the future. Don't be vague. Haig. Seemingly affronted by Long John insisting that their scotch is basically definitive and there's really no need for any others to bother, Haig defiantly cries, Sir, I exist. Get it right. Get Haig. It tastes the way whiskey ought to taste. It's a compliment as well as a present. It's what everyone wants. Even the kids. Christmas is Haig. It is Christmas. If you don't get at least one bottle of it, you're spitting in the baby Jesus' eyes. Please, for the love of God, don't be vague. Moving hastily on, Benson and Hedges are in the midst of their gold-obsessed period, and it really is quite surreal to see cigarettes advertised with the same overripe faux sensualist copy as everything else. Fine tobacco, blended as only Benson and Hedges know how, into a cigarette of ample proportions and smokes mellow and cool. Same bollocks, even some of the same words as the Haig advert. Smooth and mellow the way it ought to taste. The big joke is that this sort of thing doesn't really stand out particularly, whereas the oblique visual puzzles they had to resort to after all copy was banned stick in the mind. Of course, that has long been cured in itself by simply banning all tobacco advertising of any kind. The big thing here, of course, is that they come with coupons to reward brand loyalty via an exclusive gift catalogue, a la the legendary Green Shield. You know the sort of thing. Collect X amount of stamps and you can use it to buy a tease made. Quite popular in times of economic hardship and eventually evolved into Argos. Various companies over the years tried out their own versions of this basic model, mostly petrol stations, like Eto's Tiger Tokens or Texaco Stars. Going back to Benson and Hedges, I suppose it does make a special sense from a company whose products literally killed you. Back to the cognac. Hennessy, unlike Martel, is not a favourite of the French or anything. Instead, it's old. It is so old. Old as balls. Older even. This applies to both the company and 
the product itself. Apparently the original Mr. Hennessy founded the company in the days of Louis Says. And that's the one who had his head off in the revolution. So yeah, a while back, well done there. Like Martel, the high price of the stuff is an issue. Well, rather than turn it into an algebra brain teaser to try and obscure it like Martel did, Hennessy just boldly state the numbers. Their strategy is defiant. The very first thing in the advert is the giant statement justifying the expense. Yes, this stuff is dear. Because you get what you pay for. Deal with it. And back to the scotch again. This time we don't even get to see it, because the advertising strategy is purely lifestyle based. When the head waiters start to know your name. Feels like a higher class version of the people at the liquor store call me ma'am. But anyway, once that happens, it's time to grow up and start actually knowing your scotch, according to the copy. Instead of buying based on fancy labels or whatever's fashionable at the moment, like some kind of hipster casual pleb, get Johnny Walker, the scotch that DJ named himself after. Because it's apparently the best, and what's more, it's for proper grown-up whiskey drinkers with hairy balls. I never knew scotch was such a lifestyle statement. And the booze just keeps coming a couple of pages later. Oh, look, it's something like Nouvelle Cuisine. Here we see one of Europe's attempts to make wine happen in the UK. Not the really good stuff, mine. The lower end of the continental market is good enough for the higher end of us Philistine Brits. With that in mind, here's Dressura. A light red from Portugal. Not a port. It's neither fortified nor from a porter. Apparently Dressier is so nice it can make up for the sorry and impoverished and lonely and wretched state of your life. Such that your Christmas dinner consists solely of a single slice of processed ham. In other words, it gets you drunk very fast. Or so I infer. Okay, next. Ah, now that's what I'm talking about. I'd almost forgotten it was Christmas and not just drink o'clock. Admittedly, it's still booze, but at least it's festive. Hey, I'd love a baby sham. Well, sure, Charles Orgins, why wouldn't you? Other than because it's sickly and unpleasant, and despite your best mid-80s advertising efforts, inescapably effeminate. Oh well, the Christmas setting does provide a fairly obvious role for the enduring brand mascot, Bambi the Chamois. It's not really Bambi. And over the page, there's an example of some fags also getting into the spirit. Give the great gift of lung cancer. I'll bite me. What happens when you have a yo-ho-ho -ho party? I don't want to imagine. But apparently it's this. Look at this lot. You'd think they'd known each other all their lives and they'd only met half an hour ago. That in itself isn't exactly a recommendation to me, but it goes on. And someone had the good sense to bring some Captain Morgan rum. And now they're so smashed out of their minds they don't know who they're with or where they are or even where they live. And Uncle Albert there is clearly in mortal agony. Next, and having nothing to do with Christmas at all, an advert for British Rail Intercity that doubles as a stuff advert for the British Wife Council. My wife and I have decided to go our own ways. The moment we reach London. She to the shops in a matinee. I to my meeting in the city. I shan't see her again for, I must be brave about this, several hours. When we shall meet at Liverpool Street. We have a day to have dinner together on the intercity train going home. I shall have a contract in my pocket. She will have several dozen parcels marked Harrods and Peter Robinson and so forth. I suppose I'll have to be brave about that too. We shall flee swiftly together through the evening light, the wine stirring almost imperceptibly in our glasses. Our eyes locked across the starched linen of the tablecloth between us. Our hearts beating faster as home gets nearer. How very Noel Coward and David Lean. If only he wasn't apparently married to Mary Whitehouse. It's a nice idea to take your wife along next time you intercity on business. Intercity isn't a verb, but carry on. But don't take our word for it. Ask her. Well, it's not like she's got a life outside of you, is it? I mean, the only problem is that she's going to have to work twice as hard tomorrow to keep the house in order while you're at your usual work. But then that's just not your problem. Okay, I have to move on now. 
Christmas time, it's Timex time. OK, there's a lot of things here claiming to be the spirit, the very pith of the Christmas season. This time it's watches, with a handy ready reckoner, so you know who they're all for, and probably more to the point, what they all cost. They all look like watches to me at first glance, but the differences are real and striking. This one's cute, and yet grown up, because it's for little girls. This chunky boy is for manly men with large balls, so it's rugged and tough for outdoor living, and yet elegant for those James Bond moments back in the clubhouse. Or for those really testosterone-soaked men, there's this even manlier sports model that doesn't bother looking nice because it's too busy driving massive cars and punching bears in the face. This one's for the girl with the mini skirt and the diary crammed with dates. Your aspirational 60s Donny Bird. Doesn't say why this is her time, X. It just is. Perhaps because of the holes in the strap to allow dainty wrists to breathe. Or because of the stylish face with Arabic numbers like the kiddie models. More sophisticated ladies are directed towards this near-identical thing. Notice the Roman numerals. Right before the back page, more cigarettes. Rothmans are famously the choice of hilarious wife-beater Andy Cap, although this brand of theirs would probably be too fancy for him. Cambridge, indeed. Like the P&H earlier on, these come with trading stamps. Only this time it's the OGs themselves' green shield. One for every fag. They keep threatening to bring those things back. Not the fags, the green shield stamps. Yes, yeah, as no one has any money anymore except Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. It might be a fun distraction while we wait for the inevitable collapse of Western civilization. Finally, the back page of both the radio and TV Times double issues for years belonged to Butlins. Almost without fail. Except on a couple of occasions when Pontins got their noses in instead. This is one of those. It's basically the same thing anyway. The same holiday experience, regimented fun, wobbly chalets, overcast skies and so on. Except that the coats are blue. Apart from that, Pontins' main difference at this point was that you could go Pontinental for the same experience with better weather and more Watney's Red Barrel in places like Torremolinos or Porretz. Watch the adverts on your ITV channel and see how excited you get about Camber Sands. And that's it. That's how the 60s stumbled to a conclusion, advertising-wise, in the TV Times. With a lot of alcohol. They didn't know they were born. The three-day week was only four years away. That was a reason to drink. And smoke. But there were solid gift ideas in there too, those electrical gadgets from GEC, all those Timex watches. And of course, some straightforward sexism too. Because hey, it's 1969. We just made the gays legal. The ladies had their baby sham and their slimline watches, and they could accompany their square-jawed husbands to London to frolic while he's breadwinning. What more do they want? Human dignity? Go pont in in Western Supermare and see how much you find there. just sat through a Bob the Fish production. Nice! If you haven't already, you absolutely must check out bobthefish.org.uk. Literally hundreds more videos, not unlike that one, adding up to days worth of entertainment and all absolutely free. But if you're not a cold-hearted skinflint, you can always support us on Patreon. 
For as little as anything at all, you can make programs like the one you just watched possible in the first place, and become eligible for bonus material such as glimpses of the book I'm writing about the BBC, monthly riffings on random commercial breaks, the complete archives of the angry political satire magazine Two Sons, and even the odd very occasional bonus video essay unavailable anywhere else. If nothing else, you should prevent me from starving and or freezing to death in the foreseeable future, so that'd be nice. No pressure or anything. You make it what it is. Mm -hmm.